Hey guys, so this is the first video in my, I don't really know what I'm going to call it. Oh, oh, something important. Say I start talking about um, Tarkington, right, at like 7 minutes 15 seconds. So I will write that in the description box so you can click on 7.15 and it'll take you straight to there in the video in case you do just want to hear about Tarkington. I would love it if you'd watch the whole video. Uh, because I am going to put a lot of work into this, but I know like sometimes you just don't have time and you don't want to hear about like all the halls that don't really matter to you. So yeah, that's my plan. So I'll be a senior this fall at Purdue University. I adore Purdue and I did want to give you the scoop on residence halls at Purdue, like on campus living, just because coming like Coming in as a freshman, I wasn't able to visit campus. I wanted to know the pros and cons of everything. And um, it's pretty much just facts laid out on the website. And I thought it'd be nice to hear from somebody who has been at Purdue for three years, like the ins and outs of residence life at Purdue. Um, so I have all my notes, so we're just gonna get started. So a few things, I'm just going to start with like um, some overall things that I feel like are important to know before we go into like each hall. There are a variety of types of rooms in the residence halls. Standard doubles, singles, suite style, um, then there's triples, there's quads. There's, there's a lot of different types, honestly. But the one that a lot of freshmen get placed into are standard doubles. Obviously on every floor there is an RA. RAs at Purdue are just amazing. When I was a freshman, I got to know a lot of the RAs that were like juniors and seniors and they work so hard. Okay, something really important to note. There is no alcohol or drugs allowed in residence halls. Drugs is like absolutely not, that's a given, you know? Like Purdue is in Indiana, no weed. No alcohol even if you are over 21. So another thing I wanna talk about is learning communities. During your application to Purdue, you can like pick learning communities that you want to be a part of. Each learning community is on a floor in like a dorm. Harrison, the fourth floor on the guy's side was um, Epics, which is an engineering learning community. Harrison, seventh floor on the girl's side was the animal science learning community. If you get placed in a learning community, you will live where the rest of that learning community lives. So there are a variety of different residence halls like based on um, gender. I lived at First Street Towers my sophomore year and First Street Towers is um, co-ed by like room. So basically um, I lived next door to a guy and on the other side of me was a girl and then uh, somebody else on my floor was transgender. Like you'll be living with a variety of different genders if you're living in a co-ed dorm. But in other dorms you it's either co-ed by floor like you like it's an all-guys floor then under it's an all-girls floor and then you know like that or it's co-ed by like tower so Harrison Hall when I lived there my freshman year um so it's like shaped like this so it's like flat and then on either side there's like a tower so um the flat part in the middle is the lobby and then one side is all girls like all the floors are girls and then on the other side it's all guys so all the floors are guys obviously so um, yeah so there's that and then the only thing is nowhere um, in the residence halls can you have a roommate of a different gender something else that's important that I really like about Purdue is that there's a floor in Hillenbrand Hall that's like gender inclusive living it's not restricted to members of the LGBTQ plus community you have to specifically state that you want to be a part of it um, if you are part of the LGBTQ plus community, you do not necessarily have to live there. It's just an option in case you do want to. I wanted to plug that really quick. So yeah, now I'm gonna start with actually like going through each hall. So the first four halls I'm starting with are Shreve, Earhart, Harrison, and McCutcheon. Just because they are freshman dorms, they are all standard doubles, Shreve Hall. So Shreve Hall, It is close to four of the five dining courts. It has amazing study areas. The entire basement is this humongous like study area. Shreve has pretty good closets too. Um, I liked them, honestly, there's more space than I thought there would be. Shreve is one of the dorms that I lived at. And when I was a freshman, 
Shreve was the only one of those four, like Shreve, Earhart, Harrison, and McCutcheon, that had not had its bathrooms renovated. That was pretty much the only bad thing about Shreve. I really liked it. Okay, so Earhart. It is near Hillenbrand Dining Court and right on top of Earhart Dining Court. And so that means that in the winter when it's really cold and you don't want to go outside, even though you have to eat, you can literally walk downstairs. The closets are well sized. They're about the same size as Shreve. They have had issues with mold and water leaking. So, but the staff is like really helpful when it comes to that stuff. They um, immediately take care of everything. The elevator breaks down a lot. That is kind of common, I think. Earhart bathrooms are nice. Um, Harrison Hall. It is close to Purdue West. Purdue West has Papa John's, Subway, Dairy Queen, Follett's, uh, I think Purdue Follett's bookstore. Hill and Brand Dining Court and Earhart Dining Court are close to Harrison. Um, they're the same standard doubles, air conditioned and the lobby community in Harrison is just incredible. At least when I live there. I don't know like if it's, you know, if it's different now, but like it's just, it's amazing. It's a great way to meet people. Um, you can do homework there. Um, it's just like really, really nice. I, I loved it. Bathrooms are um, newer. Uh, they are renovated. I really liked the bathrooms in Harrison when I moved there second semester freshman year. Harrison Hall also has Harrison Grill. Basically they have like, they have sandwiches, pizza, um, I think like, burgers, fries, shakes, like all of that type of stuff. So the cons are in any communal bathroom because there aren't like a ton of stalls and there's generally 50 people living on that floor, 25 rooms, 50 people um, in the in these four halls. Um, you, you will have to wait sometimes. Um, I kind of just ended up timing my showers so that I knew like a lot of people wouldn't be showering then. Like say I had a gap between classes, I'd go back and shower like in that gap. Harrison is a little further from campus. Um, I never saw that as an issue just because, I don't know, it's like the bus picks you up literally right outside um, and you can just walk. It's like a straight walk down to Beering, which is like the entrance to the rest of the campus in a way. McCutcheon Hall, really nice bathrooms like those other three. It is right across from Purdue West. The con though is that it is the furthest from campus. The next one up is Hillenbrand Hall. So there's a room with two people in it, a room with two people in it, and then a bathroom joining the two rooms. So four people share that bathroom, but they don't all share a room. The rooms are bigger, um, the closets are nicer, and they have these huge like mirror things on the closets, which are pretty nice. There's a dining court right downstairs. I really like the cookies, like the chocolate chip cookies at Hill and Brand Dining Court. There's a small gym in the basement of Hill and Brand. The private bathrooms that are shared by those four people are cleaned once a week by service staff. Gender inclusive living is available here. Hillenbrand is further from campus. It has, the rooms have smaller windows. It doesn't have great cell service and it's not a great um, community per se. Uh, just, just because I think it is because like a lot of the people that live there are upperclassmen and they tend to have their doors shut. Like, you know, because like as a freshman, you do want to meet people all the time, but as an upperclassman, you are like, you have your friends. Like once they have their friends, they're just kind of like, okay, I don't need to try as hard anymore. I'm gonna close my door, kind of do my own thing. Uh, everybody's still really nice, but it's like not a great sense of community. So, First Street Towers. They are singles, the rooms are really big, bathrooms are really nice, uh, there's cleaning service once a week. It's right across from Earhart Dining Court. Hill and Brand Dining Court is also really close, Windsor is also really close. Um, it is pretty expensive. The sense of community is almost non-existent for most people. However, for me it was the opposite, just because me and, my, me and two of my friends had planned to live on the same floor. Um, so one of them was my neighbor, the other one was a couple doors down. We started hanging out in the lounge on our floor and people started joining us. That must have been in like October, November um, of first semester sophomore year. And then by like December, we had like a group of eight, t eight to 10 of us and we were just like really close, but that doesn't happen for a lot of people. So that's something to be aware of. Meredith Hall. Meredith Hall is all girls. Honestly, it's a really good community. This happens a lot with the residence halls where the rooms are smaller, um, where Meredith, Tarkington, Cary Quad, these, the rooms in those are generally smaller um, and so this like this sense of community honestly comes from that from what I've noticed um, just because I feel like people 
Maybe they feel cramped in their rooms, I don't know, but uh, their, their doors are always open. Yeah, the cons of Meredith. No AC, tiny bathrooms, and smaller rooms, like I said before. Okay, Windsor Hall is the other all-girls dorm. Pros, great location, rooms are well-sized, pretty building, honestly, it's gorgeous. You can get anywhere through the tunnels, um, even to the Windsor Dining Court. People tend to keep to themselves. It's less like of a community sense. People are just kind of like doing their own thing. The rooms are different shapes. There are limitations as to whether you can bunk your bed. And also, you might not be able to have certain like arrangements just because of how it's shaped. Okay, Third Street Suites. It's close to Windsor Dining Court. It's close to Wiley Dining Court. Ford is like a straight shot behind it. It is right next to Croc, which is a really nice study like building and uh, it's sweet style living. Starbucks and Third Street Market are right downstairs and it is close to the academic campus. Um, there is no public bathroom on the floor, so if your roommate is in the bathroom and you gotta go, you have to go all the way down to the first floor. The price is higher at Third Street. So, Wiley Hall. Wiley has Wiley Dining Corp. To get to it, you do have to walk outside. The pros, there's a really nice academic success center. It's a great place to study. It regularly conducts SI sessions, which are supplemental instruction um, for freshman science and math classes, which is really nice. It's a great location. It's right across from the Coreg. You're gonna wake up, go outside and see the Coreg, and you're gonna be like, oh man, I gotta go. I gotta go work out. It is one of the oldest halls, and the walls are thin because of that. There are only four shower stalls on each floor. Tarkington Hall, incredible community, okay? It's all male. Um, it, had a, it has a recently renovated lobby. It is next to Wiley. It shares the same advantages when it comes to being right across from the Korak and pretty close to Wiley Dining Court, and it is also really close to Ford Dining Court. Yeah, and it also has a computer lab, which I did not know. That's pretty cool. The cons are that the rooms are smaller um, and there's no air conditioning. Owen Hall. So they are standard doubles. Uh, the Hall Club does a lot. So the cons, like there's no air conditioning. It's definitely gonna suck for the first two months, but I think after that it's totally fine. There are some plumbing issues. It's further from the academic campus, but the Silver Loop picks up right outside, um, which is pretty nice. Hilltop Apartments is right behind Owen. So the pros are the rooms are really big. Um, you have your own little ki kitchenette, your own bathroom, and the closets are big. You have your own bathroom with a bathtub, and Ross Aid is right behind it, which is a pro if you go to the games, but becomes a con because on game days it becomes really, really loud. Uh, the cons are the further up you live on the hill, the farther the walk is. So it is one of the furthest residence halls from campus. It's more isolated, definitely, because there are only four apartments per like building. Um, so I don't, I don't think there's a great sense of community. All right. Cary Quadrangle. So it's all male. There's Cary South and there's Cary North. So Cary South um, are, you know, like are those ones that are referred to as the closets and we'll get to that. And then Cary North is the suites. Um, it's also known as the outers, I think. The pros of Cary South. Um, the community is by far the best in any of the residence halls. Like I know guys who have lived there who are living there for their fourth year as, as seniors. That really says something about like just the environment there. The rooms are really cheap. The cons are there's no air conditioning and they're smaller rooms than standard doubles, which is why they're called closets. They're bigger than closets. Carry North, um, the pros are they are suite style. They're huge air conditioned rooms. There are lounges and kitchenettes and there's a bathroom cleaning service that comes once a week for your private bathroom. Because Carry North is more upperclassmen, um, there's less sense of community than Carry South. Carry North, the suites are twice as expensive as Carry South. Walk away. Okay, so Hawkins Hall. Hawkins is an upperclassman dorm. It is in the middle of campus, so it's right behind Cranert. So there's some singles, some doubles. There's study lounges throughout the building. In Hilltop, Hawkins, and the UR Boiler Apartments, you have a choice between whether you want a meal plan or not. So you could have like tons of dining dollars and just use those for food. You can't cook in Hawkins. You can heat stuff up. Um, and if you have a rice cooker, you can make rice, but you can't actually cook. So um, you will be eating out a lot if you don't get a meal plan, so that's something to keep in mind. It is 24 seven quiet hours, which is really nice for studying. Some rooms have private bathrooms too, which is pretty nice. But most, I think a lot of them uh, do share like a big bathroom. So the cons are because it's an older building, the walls are really thin 
you can hear everything from the next room. If you decide to have a meal plan, because it's further from the residence part of campus, um, it's far from the dining courts. The UR Boiler Apartments. Okay, so I lived at Blackbird Farms. The pros, it's like living in your own apartment, but better because you can have a meal plan. So I chose to have an eight meal plan. Um, so I basically like while I was on campus for classes during the day, I'd go to like Wiley and eat lunch and then I would cook breakfast and dinner. And it was really nice being able to like eat at the dining courts, but also be able to like cook. Another pro is uh, you could live with three roommates or you could live with one. So if you live with like if four people live in a place, then there's two bedrooms and two bathrooms. Regardless of the circumstance, two people are going to share a bedroom and a bathroom. I lived in an apartment where I had one roommate and we shared one bathroom. Living area, like living room is so nice. Kitchen is incredible. Like I loved the kitchen. Like I was so motivated to cook. There's a washer and dryer in unit. There's a little like room. It's like the washer dryer room. It is more independent than living in the on-campus residence halls. The RAs are great. They're always there if you need them, but they pretty much leave you alone. So the cons are it is one and a half miles off campus. So you have to take the bus or drive. Um, I kind of did a little bit of both. Parking on campus really blows. The only one this really matters for is Blackbird Farms because it's the only UR boiler like block that is one and a half miles off campus. Even though we live one and a half miles off campus, we are not eligible for any parking permit other than a residence hall parking permit. So this is a problem because if I drive to campus, I have to be able to park somewhere but it has to be a residence hall spot, which is not a problem, except for the fact that all of the on, like all of the residence hall spots are taken by people who live in on-campus residence halls. I've emailed Purdue, they explained it to me, but it still, it still blows, dude. Like, I feel for them, I feel for them having to like prioritize and everything, and this isn't huge on their list of priorities, but it still sucks, okay? Like, I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you. In some of the other UR Boiler Block apartments, like 414 Nor North Russell and some others, there's two bed, two bath for two people, which is where I'm living next year. I do wanna talk about um, the overflow, like Purdue's housing, like problem. Um, I think it's important to address it in a video about housing at Purdue. Purdue admits more and more students every year because um, our tuition is frozen, right? So the, the fact that tuition is frozen is incredible. Thank you, Mitch. However, this results in having to admit more and more students every year because like as a growing university, we need money. But because we are um, freezing tuition, we can't get the money we need by increased tuition rates. So they're just kind of admitting more students which makes sense in theory, but practically the, oh my God. I do wanna read this statement that's on the website about auxiliary housing. So, all students who have a signed housing contract by May 5th are guaranteed a living space in university residences for the upcoming academic year. However, due to the continued popularity of living on campus with returning students in a large freshman class, not every student receives their permanent residential assignment immediately. To meet housing commitments, university residences provides temporary and auxiliary space for students with signed housing contracts. The majority of these spaces are within university residence. However, a few students will be housed in short-term spaces at the, Memorial, at the Purdue Memorial Union Club Hotel. These will be the first residents assigned to a permanent location. So yeah, I hope you guys liked this.